Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome again to Streams of Hope. It's great to be connecting with you this Thursday. As you're joining us on Facebook and YouTube today, I want to encourage you to say hi in the comments. Please post your prayer requests in there and your praise reports as well so that we can pray for you and celebrate with you as well. I also want to encourage you and challenge you to uh, share this video with a friend. Tag them into the comments, start a watch party, or just send them a link to this video so that they can enjoy this message as well. I want to share with you just a few ways you can stay connected to some of the things that we as Life Church do during this lockdown period. The first is our life groups. These are the best place to stay connected to everything that we are doing as a community in this time. And life groups are the perfect place to find that community, the perfect place to get around people who will encourage you, who will help you, who will support you as you go through life. And if you're not yet in a life group, you can join one today. All you need to do is email us at office at life-church.co.uk and we'll connect you with a great group of people who will be happy to welcome you in and make you part of their family. Secondly, I want to remind you about our pastoral phone line, which is open again today from 12 till 2 p.m. You can call us on 01522 694 694 and one of our pastors would love to speak with you. This is open to everybody, whether you're part of Life Church or whether you're just tuning in for the first time today, anybody is welcome to give us a call and we would love to chat with you, whether that's about something specific or whether it's just to hear a different voice on the phone. So give us a call. Uh, we'd love to talk to you. And I also want to take this opportunity to remind you about our teaching series, looking at the Gospel of John, which is starting tonight. And it's all online, so it's a great way for you to use this time constructively to plug into an incredible message and to dive under the hood of Scripture to understand more about uh, God and who he's called us to be and how we can grow into that person. So if you're not yet signed up for that course and you'd like to join us, please do, again, send us an email at the same email address, office at life-church.co.uk. We'll sign you up for that group and you'll get some great comprehensive notes delivered to your email inbox along with tuning in to the videos as well. It's going to be a great experience and I'd really encourage you to come and be part of the community. Join us on the course as we delve into John's Gospel. So all this week on Streams of Hope, we've been looking at this journey of discovery that we're all invited to go on, discovering, finding out who God has created us to be. And we at Life Church, we articulate that journey through three simple words, connecting, growing and thriving. Connect, grow, thrive. We've talked already this week about what it means to connect, what it means to grow. And today we want to consider what it means to thrive in the context of that journey of discovery. And so I'm going to hand over to James now. He's going to start off this conversation as we look at the subject of thriving as the person who God created us to be. James. Thank you, Pete. That's great. It's great to be with all of you today. And I want to start by asking you this question. Is growth enough? Is growth enough? Growth, I think everyone would agree, and certainly in the Christian life, is a positive thing. Growing into the person God has created us to be is a positive thing. But is growth enough? Is there something more than that? Because at Life Church, we have this new mission, this new journey we want everyone to be on that we've really begun to articulate properly since the start of this year. In discovering who God created you to be, we don't just want you to connect. We don't just want you to grow, but we also want you to thrive as well. Connect, grow, thrive. The word thrive means simply to grow prosperously and to flourish in everything we do. So how, what does that look like? Well, it looks like flourishing in your relationship with God, thriving in your relationship with God. It looks like thriving in your relationships in church. It also looks like thriving in the world as well, doing things for God that maybe you wouldn't have done a year ago or six months ago or even yesterday. You can begin to thrive today. I just want to talk around a few areas where we can thrive. Firstly, I really believe in our relationship with God. The Bible is absolutely central. We are so often that Life Church talk about the, the four things that are really, really important, really indispensable. Firstly, we need the Bible. Secondly, we need to worship God. Thirdly, we need to be in relationship with other people. And fourthly, we need to pray as well. Those things are so important. They should be like our daily diet as as Christians, the things that we can't do without. But I really believe that the Bible is, ab should be absolutely central if we're going to thrive. You may have heard this quote 
used or this piece of truth used around church before about scripture being our final authority and really what that means is that to really understand what God's heart is we need to understand what he said through the bible and scripture needs to be uh, kind of the the end of the line the end of the lord the end of what what god says needs to be what settles the matter really so if god has an, if in other words if god has an opinion over something if god says this is where things are for christians it's important that we see our lives begin to line up with that and our thoughts line up with what he says and a great way to unite all of us rather than we you know it's great to have opinions on different things but in terms of really being all, all of us being able to agree on stuff if we can all agree that the bible is true that the bible is right and the bible is our final authority then we'll find that so many any of the things that would otherwise pull us apart as people begin to as the people of god cement us together what we really need to do is take the implications of the Bible, if you're going to thrive and apply it to your own life. Then I think for every single person who's ever become a Christian, there is change necessary. There's always change because God never, ever says no to one thing unless he has a bigger yes in mind. So he may say, no, you shouldn't do that. But it's not because he wants to ruin your fun. It's because he has something else that's so much bigger, so much better, so much more wonderful for you in mind as well if we're going to thrive we really need to get into the bible i really believe it should be part of a christian's daily diet to have some kind of feeding almost from the bible you see the bible as a daily meal the way that we can really begin to see this take root in our own lives is to consume scripture to meditate upon scripture to sit and to think what does this really say to me and to begin to study further into scripture to see what it really is i mean the bible is this constant treasure trove of truth this constant treasure trove of the love that god has for the world that's one of the reasons we'd encourage you to get on board with the thing that pete talked about earlier claire porter's teaching series on the on john's gospel it's going to be really good john's gospel is sometimes called the most theological of the gospels the one that talks most clearly and in most detail about the character of god and who god really is so i'd really encourage you to get signed up for that that is a way you could begin to thrive by the way you don't need to be an expert to get involved you could you could be a complete and utter beginner to the bible and yet why not get signed up because you could find some amazing stuff that you could learn about the a man called ch spurgeon once said he said these three words he said it should say on the front of a bible eat this book consume this book allow this book to come right into your mind right into your life right into your heart digest it it's got nourishment for our lives in there it speaks of who god really is to consume the bible is a way you can thrive i also think a really important to think way to think about thriving is to ensure that we're planted what do i mean by that well a really good way of thinking about how christians should be planted comes from psalm one the very very first psalm the gateway gateway psalm it starts off by saying this by saying blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way of the, of the sinners take or sit in the company of mockers but whose delight is is in the law of the lord and who meditates on his law day and night and what psalm one does is it kind of paints this picture of one life compared to another a blessed life with god or a life that says no to god and it really says there are only, one of the messages it communicates is that there are only two options open to us either we live with god or we live without god and it talks about the blessings that come when you know god and when you decide that you're going to not only grow in god but thrive in your relationship with god and it compares it kind of juxtaposes it with a relationship or a life without god i think for christians there's only one road open to us and it's the road of life the road that leads to jesus and so being planted in god is so important being connected into god is so vital we've got if we're really going to thrive we need to be planted if you read through john 15 uh, jesus says the words remain in me and I'll, I'll also remain in you that's a way that we can really see how by being in order to thrive we need to be planted in who jesus really is and really know who he is we can also we also need to be planted in the house of god and so it's so important to be connected into a church 
that you can call your own, that you can make your home and you can say, I'm going to begin to form really wonderful relationships with here. The, the only other thing I want to tell you about how we can really thrive, how Christians can really thrive. And you might not be a Christian, but you might be looking on thinking, maybe it's for me or it's not for me. Well, I want to encourage you to think that there is a, an incredible life out there to discover, a life with Jesus. It's nothing that it's not it's not something that's exclusive to anyone it's open to absolutely everyone and i just want to finish by saying if we're going to thrive then we if we're going to thrive then if we decide that yes we are going to thrive then we will find that god's destiny and purpose for every single one of us will begin to be unfurled right in front of our eyes as we continue to walk the journey of our life with him I think to thrive, if we're going to thrive, if a person is going to thrive, then they really need to get a really clear idea first, a foundation of who they are in Jesus. Jesus says great things about his people. He says, you're my beloved children. He says, you're the ones I died for. He says, you're the head and not the tail. You're not beneath, but you're on top. You're seated in heavenly places with me. Your citizenship is in heaven. He speaks these wonderful things over us. But what we've got to do if we're going to thrive is we really need to believe it. And not only do we need to believe it, but we need to see that begin to be really, not just believed, but lived out in our lives as well. The most important thing for anyone to have in their life is to have a sense of purpose. And underneath that, we need to kind of give the the foundation for purpose is a really clear identity. It's like building a house. You can only build a really great house if you have really good, solid and proper foundations that go down deep and can support that's what, what is on top. So I want to encourage you, why don't you go away today and read Psalm 1 and look at these two different lives, the life that with Jesus and the life without him, and just ask yourself the question, seriously, all of us ask the, ourselves the question, which one are we going to live? And I encourage you today to choose life, choose to thrive, choose a life with Jesus. Back to you, Pete. That's brilliant, James. Thanks so much for bringing that. And um, one of the things that really encourages me about thriving, uh, and especially in the context of our journey, as we've described it, connecting, growing and thriving, is that it really is just kind of a natural response to, to what happens when you start connecting and you choose to go on that journey of growth. As you connect to God and then you say, God, come and grow me into that person you've created me to be. The kind of natural outworking of that is thriving. And we actually we begin to operate as that person that God has created us to be as we surrender up ourselves to that journey of growth and choose to engage with it. As you were talking about um, the importance of getting into scripture. I was reminded again of that wonderful passage in Romans 12 verses 2 where it talks about not conforming to the patterns of the world but be transformed through the renewing of your mind so that you're able to, uh, to discern what God's perfect and pleasing will is for your life and I think that's one of the most important um, points that we can take on board when we're considering how we engage with scripture is that when, when, we, when we do engage with scripture, that is the thing that allows us to, to be transformed, to, to allow to allows our, our, us to be renewed by the transforming, or be transformed by the renewing of our mind, sorry. That is the thing that allows us to do that because um, it, it changes the way in which we think. It, it, sort of, it almost reprograms our brains to, um, to operate a, a di in a different way. And, and that may sound weird uh, uh, and, a, a bit odd but it's actually a, a really beautiful thing because what that allows us to do is to discern what are the things that should be in our life and what are the things that have no right to be there and, and when when you're able to do that you're able to identify the things that are from God the things that should be in our lives the things that are going to cause us to thrive the good patterns of behavior the good disciplines that we build up in our lives like reading the bible like praying like worshiping like spending time with other believers and it allows us to discern those things from the bad things that shouldn't be in our lives like you know the, the distractions that can get in the way or, or the un, unproductive patterns or the destructive behaviors that we're perhaps prone to in, in our natural selves 
when we get into scripture, it allows us to, to do those things, to recognize the good from the bad and to understand that the bad has no right to be there. And actually that God has given us the authority to get rid of those things, to get them out of our life so that we can begin to more and more and more thrive as that person who lives in those good things that God has given us to be, uh, to, to be present in our life. And so as we, as we grow through our journey of, of reading more and more scripture, of understanding it and allowing God to transform us and by the power of his spirit, allowing him to reveal to us what he's, what he's put in scripture and sitting under the, under the tutelage of great Bible teachers and those who are, are gifted preachers and communicators and prophets and all of the other people who were put in the church to be a blessing to the church, to, to build it up, to equip it. We actually, we position ourselves to thrive as the person that God has created us to be. So I, I, I'm really encouraged that every time that you get into scripture and you open up yourself to say, God, grow me in this journey, that you, uh, you, you kind of move yourself into a place where you can inhabit the promise, where you can begin to thrive as that person that God has created you to be. And there are all sorts of ways in which that outworks itself into our daily life. And maybe there's one or two of those thoughts that you want to pick up now as, as, as we consider what it means to actually thrive as that person. Yeah, it's really, really good, Pete. Some great thoughts there. And I, I really think a, a great place to start, something that Kelly, my wife, always encourages me to do. She says, when you start something, start with the end in mind. So don't just begin something from where you are, but begin where you are. But before you start, think, well, where do I want to be? Where is this life leading? Where is this journey taking me and quite simply for any christian the end is kind of it's almost like really a next chapter if you imagine the end of your earthly life was is what i'm talking about the if you start with that end in mind in reality that's just a, a new beginning because in reality it's the it's not it's not the end it's just the start of eternity with jesus but if you begin your life today and you think to yourself, what I want to do is by, want the end, by the end of my life, I want to have achieved this, accomplished this, have be this particular person. I want to have been this kind of blessing. I want to be the most connected to God that I can be. I want someone who is constantly hosting the presence of God. If you start today like that, then that is evidence of beginning to thrive because you're having a thriving mindset and i believe even in lockdown even in days like like this because it's important to earth this in not just how we can thrive in terms of the sum total of our lives but in today's situation which is lockdown we can look past the things that restrict us so we can't go to church but we can still be in contact with other christians even if it's just like this just face to face like this where it might be a text message or a phone call or even if you live in the house with other christians that you can encourage those people today you can just speak truth to them one of my friends spoke some truth to me yesterday and it really really i was going through one or two uh, negative thoughts over something and it just completely lifted me from where i was to where i needed to be if you can concentrate during lockdown on well actually this is a great opportunity because i may have to get into the bible because i've got more time maybe or i've got times at different times of day than i than i would normally i can get up a little bit earlier to to read the bible I, I love getting up early and seeing kind of almost seeing the sunrise or not too long after that anyway and being able to devote that time to reading the bible and some prayer and and get really connecting with god and I, I i really believe that even though we're we're separated from one another physically there is still at the moment so many great opportunities for us to be able to look past that and to say well actually i i can thrive and i can come out and i can come out of this lockdown period in a better shape and how I entered into it. For some people, this is, and it may not always feel like it, but it is a period of a, a pause and a period where you can choose real rest and rest in God and find a, 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 new, a new pattern and a new rhythm to your life. And that could be something that goes way beyond where you are at the minute. One of the reasons I'm choosing to read more of the Bible at the minute is I want to grow my stamina, grow my expectation for what I can consume every single day. And I think that maybe that's even something that you could look to do as well. So I just want to encourage you today to really think, how can I learn to really develop a thriving mindset and see that change 
my everyday life change what I do. I don't know what you think to that, Pete. Yeah, that's really good. I really like that idea of starting with the end in mind. And I, I use this phrase to describe it when we're talking about our, our journey at Life Church, when we talk about discovering who God created you to be. I, I, I articulate it like this. Um, start to do the things that the person you were created to be would do. Start to do those things today. And before you know it, you'll be that person. So if you can identify what are the things that the person I was created to be would do. So what are the things that the person that God created, the very best version of that person who was reaching their full potential in, in God, what are the things that they would do? How can I start to do them today? So for me, that looks like, well, somebody who has a really strong prayer life. So I choose to dedicate an amount of time each day to prayer, whether that's 15 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour or three hours. You know, it's going to be different for different people at different stages of life. But those are those are that's one example of something I can choose to do today that the person I was created to be would do. Uh, again, spending time in scripture. Another one of the things that the person I was created to do that created to be would do. But then it goes beyond that as well. And we start seeing how as 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 the person who thrives um, uh, in that relationship with God, who's who's connecting and who's growing more and more and more every day. Remember, one degree of glory to another. As we go on that journey every day, we're becoming more and more and more like Jesus, which is the ultimate destination of any Christian. Heaven is just a lovely byproduct of that. Uh, and being more like Jesus is the priority. And so. Uh, um, as we go on that journey of growing and growing and growing into him um, I, it reminds me of, of the fact that our, when we talk about connecting and growing and thriving the whole thing is cyclical the whole thing is a cycle and the more we connect the more we grow the more we thrive the more we thrive the more we connect the more we grow and the whole thing is round and round and round and round uh, but as we thrive as that person that God created us to be we step out into that life of the impossible that we've talked about this week and we begin to do some of the incredible things that we read about in scripture and there's some incredible um, moments in scripture where we see people heal the sick we see people raise the dead we see people deliver um, people from demons we hear about people who, who give prophetic words that come to pass just as they've spoken about. Uh, and, and these are the kinds of things that I believe someone who is thriving in their relationship with God will begin to do. But you can choose today, even if you're not already at that point where you feel like you can, you know, you can go and pray for anybody and they'll be healed. And I want to encourage you this morning that, it, you know, anybody can pray for anybody to be healed. You can do that this morning. If you've, if you've got faith, go and pray for somebody to be healed. Don't put your hands on them at this very moment in time, but pick up the phone and pray for somebody. You know they're sick, pick up the phone and pray for them and believe because God is well able to do it. But even if you don't feel like you're there, identify the things that the person you were created to, to be would do. And one of them might be picking up the phone and praying for somebody and believing that they're going to get healed. And the more we do that, the more we make those decisions to choose to step out and to be brave and, and choose to run the risk of failing and not seeing the things that we might want to see, we'll, the more we will see those things. You know, 100% of the people you don't pray for are, are not going to get healed. Right? Wayne Gretzky used to, used to say this. Wayne Gretzky is one of my sporting idols. I used to love watching ice hockey and playing ice hockey. And Wayne Gretzky is one of my sporting heroes. He said, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take, right? So we have this opportunity every day to take the shot we have an opportunity to say the prayer we have an opportunity to step out and to give somebody the prophetic word we have an opportunity to get into the bible and just pull back the layers and allow god to speak into our lives and to share what we've learned with other people those opportunities are there every day the only question is are we willing to take the shot are we willing to brave the waves are we willing to get out of the boat and start choosing to do the things that the person we were created to be would do so i want to encourage you this morning that you can do that today you don't have to wait until you're at that magical point and saying well now i'm thriving no you can choose to start thriving today as you go on that journey of connecting and growing choose to do the things the person you were created to be would do and sooner or later you will be thriving as that person doing incredible things and then you'll connect more and you'll grow more and you'll do more and more and more and the whole thing will snowball as you go from one degree of glory to the next yeah, that's brilliant, Pete. I, I think the probably the final thought for me is that just just as you were talking there, I thought about I began to think about some of the people who, both 
in terms of faith and in terms of, of other kind of accomplishments. I don't think there have been many people, if any people ever, who, have, who, who we could think of who will be real heroes to us, who started their life or got to a particular point in their life and thought, I'm going to be a hero. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do the other. I just think what they did was they put one foot in front of the other and they said in their sphere of influence, whatever it was, they thought, well, I'm just going to go for it. I look at so many people who've influenced me, people in our own church who I'm so blessed to know. And I don't think they spend their time thinking about how they can impress me or how they can um can kind of fake their way to something you know like fake it till you make it that's not how it works i think people just begin to get a passion for something and they begin to press into it and they see that in our life as christians one of the the greatest greatest thing we can ever do with our lives is to love god and to love people and if we love god heart god with absolutely everything we have and if we have a desire not to get anything from anyone but just to bless people then we will find that we'll in a very short space of time, if you choose to adopt that particular mindset, you will find that you'll begin to positively influence the world that you're in. You'll become so important to people in the way that, in a way that you never were before. And you will really begin, you, you will look back on your life and even in a week's time, let alone in years to come or when you're sort of old and wizened and gray and about to go and be with Jesus, you'll be able to look back and say, I know I've made a difference. And, can I just say, no, we, we can get a bit twee about this sort of stuff, but we only get one life. And I want to encourage you just to go and live it and live it for Jesus today. There we go. I'm muting my mic. That'll help. Yeah, I, that's really great what you've just shared. I think you've touched on a really important point that I don't want to minimise before we close this morning. That is the importance of love. In all that we've talked about, love is the most important thing. In that beautiful chapter in 1 Corinthians 13, Paul talks about love and he says, if I don't have love, I'm just a clanging gong. If I don't have love, everything else is empty beside. And I love how he goes on to describe love. And he says, love is this, it's patient and it's kind. And love isn't this, it's not self-seeking. It doesn't, doesn't look after its own. It doesn't boast, it isn't prideful. And all of the love is statements or, or most of the love is statements. Love is an outward focusing thing. It's looking after the, 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 the kind of seeking the betterment of others. Um, all of the love is not statements, the kind of the, it, the inward focus things, the prideful things, the boastful things, the arrogant things. Love kind of looks out. It looks up and out at others around us. And I think that's so important to remember as we kind of go into the rest of our weeks and we consider how we grow as people is that we put love on over all things. I, like, you know, I always call it the uniform of heaven. Love is the uniform of heaven that we are called to wear. Let's put it on over everything we do, put on love. Because if we don't have it, everything else is empty. So I just want to end on that note as we kind of wrap up today. Uh, we're going to wrap up this journey uh, through our um, connecting, growing and thriving. Looking at the journey we're all invited to go on of discovering who God has created us to be. We're going to wrap that up tomorrow. James is going to do that for us. I'm really looking forward to that. And we're approaching Sunday as well. So I want to encourage you to join us on Sunday for our stream there. Uh, that starts at 10 a.m. over on our YouTube channel with Life Kids, followed by worship at 10.15. And, and then we'll have a message at 11 a.m., which will be on YouTube and also on Facebook as well. So we're really uh, uh, looking forward to that. Hope you can join us for that as we continue to look at this series, Locked Down But Not Locked In, and consider how God has used people in restricted circumstances in the past to draw that faith to show us that he can do it again today. So we're going to end there. I'm going to pray for everybody as we finish today, uh, and then we'll let you get on with the rest of your day. So Father God, I want to thank you for every single person who's watching this video live or watching back later, Lord. Thank you, Father, for their lives, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you've called them uh, uh, and to watch this video, Lord. And I pray that, Father, that they've um, been built up and encouraged by what we've shared today, Lord. And I pray that for in all of us, Lord, you would kindle a desire in our hearts to thrive, as the person you've created us to be, that unique person, Lord, who's called for purpose, Lord, who has uh, the destiny to, leave, to live that life of impossibility, Lord, to see your name glorified, to see uh, other people loved, Lord, and people around us built up and encouraged and drawn to you as we connect, as we grow, as we thrive as those people you've called us and created us to be, Lord. So bless everybody watching back now, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.
Thank you so much for being with us and we'll see you tomorrow.